Welcome to The Open Book with Amy and Tommy. We are glad you've joined us for another week together. I am really excited about this week. Um, I wear a couple of different hats around here at the church, but my original hat was as children's minister, and, and as I've taken on other hats, I've continued to wear um, the children's ministry hat, which brings me great joy and delight. One of my favorite days um, every year is our children's Sabbath, the Sunday in which our children have the opportunity to lead us in worship. Um, they are creating some decorations for the sanctuary. They will be praying and reading scripture. First graders will be receiving Bibles in, in the service. Um, from start to finish, our children will be involved and at the heart of what we do together, and it is pure joy. This year, with our children, we are focusing on being neighbors, as they and, and we have, have had and heard many conversations about um, dreams and possibilities for the future of our campus it felt like a good time to me and Brett to really think about um, and, and both imagine a neighborhood surrounding our church, but also this year we're going to be spending some time getting to know and getting a feel for the neighbors who are already around us, the, the YMCA, the Family Justice Center, other churches. Um, and and so we, we're learning and thinking about being a neighbor. So every year when we're before we plan Children's Sabbath, um, I sit down this year, Brett and I sat down with Mac to dream about the service and to get an idea of, of what he would be preaching so we can think about the rest and all the other details. And, and so he was looking at the passages and, and he didn't know our theme. This was, this was back in the summer. And so he didn't know our theme and what we were working on for this year. And, and he talked about well, there's this passage in Jeremiah, and I'm thinking about doing it, and it's talking about being neighbors. And I was like, what, what our theme for the year is? And so this passage just moves and folds beautifully into, um, into kind of what God was, was speaking to us and, and where our hearts and minds have been focused um, for this year. So, so, I, so I've been delighted to share it with our children as we get ready for Children's Sabbath, and, and I'm delighted to study it and, and have it be a part of our worship this week. Um, so that was a long lead-in to our passage, but Tommy, would you read our passage today? I'll be glad to. Our passage today comes from Jeremiah chapter 29, and we'll be starting with verse 1 and then jumping to 4, going through 7. So hear these words from the prophet Jeremiah. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare you will find your welfare. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. So we had another passage from Jeremiah a few weeks ago, and we talked about how Jeremiah was the weeping prophet. I've always um, been drawn to, to Jeremiah and, and his work and his message, but it's not really a happy or hopeful mm -hmm. book. So I don't know what it says that um, 
<laughs> I've been drawn to this, but that's another conversation for another day. But yeah. but this this is kind of a, a rare passage in this book of of something that is is hopeful and 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 positive and and full of of possibility. Um, so um, so I so I love hearing that the, these words and this encouragement from Jeremiah to the people who are are in exile. Tommy, do you want to add any other context before we jump into conversation? No, I'm I'm ready to jump into the conversation. I think okay. we, we got into Let's the go. context a little bit. We heard it in verse one that this is written by Jeremiah, who is still there mm -hmm. in Jerusalem, but he's writing to the ones in exile. Um, we know Jer Jeremiah's in prison, or we have heard that because of what he's been predicting and how he has been commit, uh, accused of treason or sedition or something because he's listening to where God is calling them, uh, not the political powers. So this is, interestingly enough, politically significant because he's kind of telling everybody to abandon violence, um, mm -hmm. abandon the things that um, put you at odds with the people where you're finding yourself. Don't don't create divisions, but instead seek welfare for one another. Mm -hmm. So, be a good that's... neighbor. Build homes, plant mm -hmm. gardens, have have families, um, create a, a neighborhood, and don't wait and don't delay. Um, and it's. You know, and I think that's so much we just wait until and and so we so I think about all the things that we um that we don't do because um we are um I, I anyway, I just think about all 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 the things we put off until circumstances are right or better. And this passage is no, don't wait. Just bloom where you are planted. You know that old, yeah, that old saying. <clears throat> it's interesting when I think about this text. There are two things that I, I remember. Number one, I, I think back to the Exodus, and when the people were actually freed from their slavery, they wander in the wilderness for a long time, and at some point they think, "Wow." Why are we wandering in the wilderness? Why don't we just go back and be slaves? Yeah. We actually knew what to expect then. Mm -hmm. So they have a hard time imagining a future. They know what the past looked like. And sometimes we look back with rose colored glasses on our past. Yeah. And we think about the things that we've known and mm -hmm. that have brought us to this place. Some of it very, very good. Some of it we probably don't realize the oppression and things from the past that are also present now. So I think here he's speaking to the people to say, yes, you, you were in Jerusalem. You did have a community here and maybe God one day will bring your descendants back to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of the past memories and the future hope, we have to live in the present with love mm -hmm. and trust that God is with us no matter where we are. Yeah. When we are. And think about what it means to love the people that are around you, where you are, even if it's not where you thought you would be. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I see in, in this passage as well, the, the call and encouragement that we find throughout scripture to love our neighbors as ourself, to, mm -hmm. Um, and and to love others the way that God loves them. Um, just a few verses past this is is one of the best known verses in Jeremiah and and in the Old Testament. Um, that Jeremiah twenty nine eleven then through thirteen. But I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord's plan for your welfare and not for harm, to give you hope. Um, to give you a future with hope. Um, and so, and so for me, it was seeing the parallel of, of that and this, that God plans for our welfare 
in verse 11, but in verse 7, we're commended to seek the welfare of the city. And so to so seeing that that call to to love and treat others the same way that that God does. And and so I think this is the um when you put this passage with that passage, you're not waiting for that. You're living as if God is already doing that and you're living into that, knowing that that is God's um plan for um for God's people. Yeah, I like that. And that word welfare um Maybe gets a bad rap in our terminology today, yeah. but in in Hebrew, it's rooted in that word shalom. Mm -hmm. So that's what the Hebrew word is here, and it is kind of mentioning welfare is about well being. It's about wholeness and peace that we're seeking for one another. And I think it's interesting because I, you know, one of the questions I always wonder is, do we believe that the well being, or our well being, I guess, is tied up in the well being of our community? Mm. do we believe that we're inter we're a part of one another because i don't see it that way oftentimes it looks like what we're ending up doing is trying to seek our own welfare <laughs> over and against somebody else yeah we can't have both it feels like we, we're kind of an either or mentality either we're going to do it my way or you know i'm going to promote me so that you can lose or mm -hmm. But I think when I think about this, that just moves us toward an insular, isolated kind of place. Yes. But I truly believe that the the person who's struggling the most in your community is a indication of the health of the community. Yeah. So how do we lift up those? Yes. We talk about crime. We talk about homelessness. A lot of things that we, we say we're afraid of. But what are we doing to to seek the well-being of others to kind of relieve that mm -hmm. fear that we have yeah because we love them and care for them so much like yes and and you you all have heard me talk a lot about enough and and living with open hands and last mm -hmm. night we're recording this on Tuesday last night we had deacons meeting and and the the meeting began with conversation around our tables, around our question given to us by our deacon chair, Cliff Christian, which is, what is generosity? What does generosity look like to you? And and around my table, that's that's one of the things that we talked about is living as if there's enough. When we live and when we're worried, there's not going to be enough. We live with our hands closed, gripping tightly to what we have and are afraid to, to share and, and give it's a scarcity mindset. Um, but, but when we live with open hands and we believe that there's enough and we find and, and we see what we have to offer. And, and, and I think in, in this, um, passage and, and I heard some reflections on it and, and the, the person talking about it said, um, said that this is a God of enough, um, that, that there is enough for all and, and, and abundance, you know, and, and, a, because it is an abundance to think that there is enough, enough food for everyone in the world, enough, you know, shelter for everyone in the world. And, um, and we're mindful of those in our community and world who don't currently have, access to food and shelter and clean water and health care and, and things that, that they need. But, but the, what caught me was this person said, it's not an abundance of excess. It's not an abundance of waste where things would be thrown away and wouldn't matter, but an abundance of enough that there was enough that we all had that we could share with and for the good of of our neighbors and so i think about that both you know right now i'm thinking about that personally as me and my family are having conversations about um, our pledge for this year but also specifically for the the capital campaign because that's going to require something of us um we don't have an abundance of where it's easy to 
to give and make, you know, a, a great big donation, but we feel called to do something. And so we're having conversations and thinking about what and how we can, we can do that. And so, um, so, so I've just been thinking about that a lot. So I think that really resonated just thinking about the, you know, the abundance of enough, um, and, and, and what we have that we, we can give so that others can live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, cause I think it's, you know, if we believe that there's enough to go around and we truly believe Jesus is called to us to love our neighbor, even our enemies as ourselves that we seek the well-being of each person and we want everybody to do well mm -hmm. not just a select few who maybe can do really well mm -hmm. but sure. how do we how do we keep moving that down and i know that sounds weird to some folks but if we if we do right by everybody i think we can uh, it comes back and it creates a a world where we're more joyful yes where where we're more generous, where we mm -hmm. give each other the benefit of the doubt and we want our want the best for all people. Yeah. And that's a hard thing because oftentimes, and we talk about this all the time, but I think we we <laughs> it's hard not to just see things through your own individual perspective. Mm -hmm. And so how do we develop empathy for the other person? How do we mm -hmm. see through see them through the eyes of Jesus so that everyone we see is a beloved child of God? Mm-hmm. Or let's get more specific, like Matthew 25 says, every person we see in need is Jesus. Yeah. And so by seeking the well-being of the least of these, we are actually affecting um, our, we're affecting the right, maybe not the right word, but we're, we're deepening our relationship with who Christ is. Right. Made known to us in every individual person. Yes. Yeah. And, and this is a, I, I'm interested in, in the relationship and place of time mm -hmm. with this calling that this isn't, this isn't a short term, this isn't a one time, but this is, this is a life and a lifestyle we are being called to. And so so both one of the things that that is standing out to me is is in verse five, build houses, not put up tents, not camp out until, but build have houses. That is something of of permanence of make this your home. And so, you know, the bloom where you're planted, but also with that, there there's something in there about putting down roots. Um, and those go deep and those, those last and, and those stay. And so, so thinking about that and, and again, and then talking about having, having children, you know, marrying and having children and grandchildren. And so don't, don't delay, don't wait and wonder. And, and I feel like this, this really speaks to so many of us today, because coming out of the pandemic, I still feel like so many of us are still kind of waiting to see and and so i feel like this kind of post pandemic life that we are caught in has some parallels to the people who first read this who were kind of in this holding pattern of of exile and this isn't this isn't where and who we're going to be forever but this is who and where we are now and let's just kind of wait to see and and so i'm grateful for for the push and the call to, to not wait, um, and not, and not to delay, um, but really just to, to live. build, build houses. Let's, this is who we are and, and where we are. Let's really live into, um, to this. So there's a sense here too, that these are the enemies are, well, in some ways you've been exiled to this place. These are not the ideal people you chose to be with, mm -hmm. but in the place that we are, it, and in this text is that God exiled you too. So they're putting a lot of this on God too. That 
you're in a place God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. If we want to look at it that way. And in this place, you can keep whining and complaining about things aren't the way they used to be. Or as soon as I can get out of here, I'm gone. But what, and you know who those people are. We know who those people are now. And we don't build real close relationships with those people. Mm -hmm. But here, I think it's being called to witness. To witness by your stability. I'm going to say it that way. Uh, it's it's being present with the people and no matter, and through all of these things, God is teaching them how to better love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To not say, you know, well, once the kids get out of college, then I can be more involved. Once, right. you know, once I retire, I'll have much more time to be involved. Yes. There's so many things that when this happens, this will happen. And it never happens. Yes. Yes. I'm going to give to the church once my kids get through college. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll have more money to do that, but I also might think I'm going on a vacation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With well, and then the money that you need to go see your kids wherever they're living in right. the world and, right. so, <laughs> and the I, time. And the, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is about being faithful each moment. Yes. Living in love each moment, mm -hmm. having a deep um, trust in God in each moment mm -hmm. so that we can love fully and abundantly and seek the shalom. Yeah. Well-being of the community in which we live as a witness to who God is. Right. And that love is the way to live, not division, not violence. Yeah. Not temporary. I like you until I can get something better. Right. And and I think that I and I, I really love that. And I I want to lean into that a little bit. The way we choose to live. Mm -hmm tells the world what we believe about god that's right but i think that really matters and and so fear? this isn't do we live in love do we live yes. in hope do we, what what is the what do people see when they see us mm -hmm. yeah and so so it's not it's not about checking boxes it's not about it's it's it is about um it is about our, our faith and our, our relationship with, with God. When, when we live like this, we don't believe there's enough and we don't, and we have less trust and less faith when we live like this, then, then we, we understand we're part of a bigger and, 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 and it's, just, and, and what we believe about God directly impacts what we believe about our neighbor how how we view other people how we treat other people what we what we desire for for other people um because it's all connected it is all connected yeah. so, um, loving god and loving our neighbor and so um yes mac, mac talked about this last night so our congregation donated a piano mm -hmm. to saint james ame right I think that's right. Yeah, which is just across the street, pretty much. But we had a piano we weren't using very often, and so we took it apart, took it over, <laughs> tuned it for their congregation as they were renovating their sanctuary, mm -hmm. and it became a gift to a worshiping community so that they could more fully worship the same God that we worship. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we had that we could share mm -hmm. and give openly. Right. Instead of saying, you know, we might need that that one Wednesday of the year. Right. So let's just hold on to it. Yeah. Maybe right. Every day. And we're seeking the welfare of our community. And we believe if we have churches in Asheville that are worshiping God fully yes. and faithfully, then it's going to be good for the welfare of the community. Yes. And that small gift, a big-ish gift, but it's a gift was a very much appreciated. And then and, but it's a gift recognized it was a gift from us, not a, not as a marketing ploy, but as a as a generosity that we want our community 
to be faithful. Yes, tears and and hugs and and joy and and it it is a gift that that did cost us something, but but really in the grand scheme of things, very little. Um, and was but, but was a gift that they around. could not. What's that? Because there's enough to go around. Because there's enough to go around, and we already. We already owned the piano. We we helped move and tune it, and so there's some expenses for that. But but had they had to had this church had to purchase a new piano, mm. th that that was a gift that they could not afford with all the other renovations. They similar to us, their church was surrounded by scaffolding and working on the exterior and interior to to restore their their sanctuary and we were a part of of that and in creating a place of of community and um it's a beautiful story and and beautiful to hear of of what this what this small gift meant to this to our brothers and sisters across the road so we give what we have because mm -hmm. we know there's enough we live the lives that God has called us to live wherever we are because we seek by by being rooted in a place we just naturally seek the welfare of that place mm -hmm. if we're further out you know I live in Fairview so Fairview becomes my I, I want things to go well in Fairview mm -hmm. <laughs> I support the businesses in Fairview uh, mm -hmm. because I care about that place I also do downtown mm -hmm. because I think downtown is where my faith community resides and i want the best to happen there too so i i go to festivals i support restaurants i try to get to know the people of downtown um, and that's a that's different yes uh, it's, it's important because i think one of the lessons of this too even though we're building houses living in them planting gardens eating um, we're seeking the welfare of the city so this is not God is not saying, go build you a house and stay in that little house so that you don't have to interact with the people of the city. He's saying, build, then go. Mm -hmm. Be a part of who they are. So and this live, is, uh, live, 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 live. And just as God comes to us and, and has come to us in so many ways and, and lives with us and in us, that's that's what we are called to do where where we are so i've been i've been talking on wednesday nights a little bit about um the the tendency for us to live in our heads so we our fat our faith becomes very abstract um we kind of know what to do and we say the right things we should love everybody we should you know follow the way of jesus have a relationship with jesus uh, we really care about community especially our faith community but those get i think sometimes become abstract if they're not embodied mm -hmm. if they're not lived out and i think lived out in community we can sit at home all day and think oh wouldn't it you know i'm pretty patient <laughs> the spirit of patience lives in me but we don't ever go out anywhere and see our are we still patient when people, when we have to wait in line, mm -hmm. when somebody doesn't do something like we thought they should? Are we still allowing the spirit of patience to live in us? Are we loving people who are our enemies? Sounds good unless we're around them. Yeah. And then, then it's harder to love them. So I think sometimes we isolate ourselves and privatize our faith rather than what scripture is telling us to do is to go out and live it. To be mm -hmm. a witness of love and nonviolence and wherever we are. Yes. To tear down the walls that divide us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And God is with us, not just here at the church, but in the community. Mm -hmm. Not just at our homes, wherever they are, but in the midst of the people that are around us. Yeah. So. Yes. Um and and I know we've already talked about it, but I but I really like how this ends. And and so it is it is making me think about how we can be good neighbors. Um and, and as we develop even more neighborhood around us, 
um, for in its welfare, you will find your welfare. And so thinking about um, thinking about the hope and promise of, of what is to come. And, and while there is much waiting and much unknown while we wait, um, a, a, a deep sense of, of faith and trust um, in God is here and, and, um, and there, there is a, a promise of, of hope for us as well. Good, Do you have anything else as we wrap up? I'm good. This is a great, <laughs> this is a great passage. I look forward to worshiping together with our children and you on Sunday. So we look forward to seeing you in person and online um, if you are not able to be here in in person but but do make this this service a part of your um, worship experience this week and um one final note i i wanted to share um a new hat that i i took on last year is um christian formation um and and one of the things that we're doing in Bible study here at the church right now is studying Psalm 84. Uh, all of our adult Bible study classes are spending one week um, studying Psalm 84. Our own David Blackman wrote a lesson for classes to do together. Um, and then um, and then they're going to the dining room for a week um, to to think about generosity and and what that looks like and how God is is calling them um, and to include this in that study in that process next week we are going to move off of our our typical so we will not be studying the sermon text for the week but we will be studying. Um, Psalm 84, along with other adult classes in our in our church. So we look forward to sharing that here and and reflecting on how lovely is your dwelling place, O, o Lord. This week we've we've kind of gone out to the neighborhood. Next week we're gonna come back into and and draw up images of our our sanctuary and our sacred spaces and and how God meets us and works in and through us. Um, because of the space. So we look forward to that. Um, anything else you want to share before we go, Tommy? Oh, thanks for all of this. Thank Bye. you. It's been good to be together and we'll see you again next week. Go in peace.